And I'm actually going to get right into it. And they really want to know how. You know, how can I blaze my own path? Uh, how can I be successful? Um, how can I follow the path that someone else has laid for me to be successful? Me to be successful. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 217, season two, episode number 17. Today, I have two incredible guests that have made um, great time. I got the founders of Habits 365. Um, a fashion streetwear brand that has been on the rise. They have over 128,000 followers on Instagram and they've been featured on Forbes. So they're doing the same thing. We got Spencer, who is a junior uh, currently at the University of Miami. And then we got Eli, who is a rising freshman at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. So I just want to say, guys, thank you so, so, so much for being part of the show. Yeah, Thanks, glad to be here. I'm hyped to be here. Man, I like you know. I actually I was telling people, um, Eli, I was telling Spencer off um, off air that I found being a coming a brand ambassador through Instagram story, and I was like, okay, how legit is that? Because you know you see all these ads and everything, and then I'm just like, okay, cool, got accepted like within the next day, and I'm saying, okay, you guys are running things, and then I was like, okay, these guys might be like what 25, 26. When I saw 21, 18, 17, 18, I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> whoa so i just wanted to ask y'all what what was the first step into like you know the, the the thought process of starting an entrepreneurial journey like why entrepreneurship and why specifically a streetwear brand when you have a lot of brands that are out here that are trying to do the same thing me and yeah Chris so i mean pretty much and um back in 2017 august um i had come home from a summer program like that I learned about entrepreneurship, like sports business, kind of th things of that nature. And then that's kind of where I got inspired to start a clothing brand. So then I was just like, all right, I'm going to do this. And then, and then we, we, we did it. Yeah. We both had a little bit of background. I, and you know, and Eli, we both had, you know, been selling re selling and reselling sneakers uh, from, you know, Jordan's the campouts and, um, that was kind of the first step into entrepreneurship and it just, you know, kind of sparked our interests so that when, you know, we were ready to do something, we just kind of went in and did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really dope. So did you guys like start off with that, you know, the reselling, was it through StockX or was it just through some Facebook stuff? Mostly all through, um, you know, just eBay and word of mouth. It wasn't, we yeah. weren't really scaling the business. We were just kind of waiting in line, picking up the shoes, selling them for 50 to $70 over over retail and then yeah. that was that was just it um that was just what we were doing we would save up for more and then when we had a little bit of extra income we would you know either splurge on like a really nice shoe or we would just save up um that's really kind of how that went it was pretty you know straightforward but it, just, it did take a lot of time we did uh you know put a lot of effort into it for sure yeah what about you Eli yeah I mean like pr pretty much like reselling was like kind of a huge thing back then it's not so much now I mean yeah, like it, there's kind of two brands of shoes that people buy it's off-white and nike yeah. besides that yeezys don't really have a market anymore <laughs> i mean besides like the old ones it's just not really like we were doing it when it was hot but now like obviously like the clothes has taken over yeah like clothing and stuff so yeah yeah you know what my bad i would be remiss i'm so sorry i want to make sure the, um, the audience gets a chance to know who you're all um who you guys are so, I mean, of course, introduce yourself. What is your name, your year, your major, and your hometown? I mean, I know you're a rising freshman, but then, you know, I still just think about what future ideas so that you're doing, Eli, and just give a sense of, like, well, where you guys came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, we were born, I, I was born in New York City. Um, I've lived there my whole life. Um, I'm, I just turned 18, and I'm going to the University of Wisconsin-Madison where I'll be studying business and also doing some entrepreneurship sort of things there but I'm trying to figure out like what exactly they have to offer but I mean I'm definitely going to spread the word of the brand on campus um I'm definitely going to do some stuff with the university like yeah. some big stuff definitely yeah so I was um I was also obviously born in New York City um that's where I've lived always and uh, you know, I'm at Miami right now studying marketing, um, minoring in sports administration. It's really been a good networking opportunity, just meeting more people who can help with the brand, who like the brand, who, you know, want to get involved, want to follow. Um, it's definitely helped me build my network um, 
in Miami and just helped me spread the word and really just find new opportunities. And really, you know, in my last year of uh, college next year, I'm really just going to try to, um, you know, just continue to do those things and really, you know, finish what I started with just spreading the brand there and really just, you know, putting a stamp on the, on the university. And, you know, when habits is really, really big, it's like, oh yeah, they went to UM, everyone at UM knew about it. And, you know, that was that. So that's really the goal for, uh, for the future for, um, for habits at Miami. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, so now with that, you guys are pre- are running a pretty successful um, e-commerce business. So why are you guys still in college? You know, like, I mean, of course, the main target audience is people that are in college, you know, 18. But I got listeners that are um, various different ages. So I guess, why do you think it was important for you all to go take that next step into college when you know that you have people like Gary Vee that are saying, well, look, if you look at the ROI nowadays, there's not necessarily a necessity for y'all to go to college anymore. Right. And so, yeah, so what I would say to that is as someone in college, um, I would say I agree. I actually do think the ROI is pretty low. There's a lot of companies that aren't looking at GPAs and aren't really looking at transcripts. They don't really care. They care about your skills, your work ethic, um, the things that really matter, the tangible things, not, you know, your SAT score or your, you know, how you did on tests, um, of random subjects. So I definitely think there's a lot of validity to that. Uh, The reason I'm still in is because I I do want to get my degree because, you know, I want to expand myself as, as far and wide as I can. And I think a degree will just help me do that. Now, could I do it without a degree? I'm sure I could. Um, However, you know, because that, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I don't actually have to pay myself out of pocket for college. um, You know, why not? And I, and, I, and I know that, you know, might sound insensitive, but I, I'm not going to pass up an opportunity that's essentially being, you know, paved. However, I'm not going to put myself in the mindset of, oh, I'm getting a degree and then I have to get a job. No, it's, I understand I'm getting this degree, but, you know, I know that this isn't going to have that much weight. And so I'm going to prioritize what I want and what I'm going to do around that instead of what most college students do is I have to get this degree and then that is it. And then whatever job takes me, I do. And that's the end of the story. I have a little bit of a broader perspective to it. And I do agree with the people who are critical of college because I don't think the ROI is that high either, to be, to be quite frank. Yeah. What about you, Eli? You know, you're a rising freshman. Like, honestly, right now, especially, like, you know, with the, the connections that y'all, y'all were able to build, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the Mayweather, uh, the, the baby, <laughs> uh, you know, NBA young boy, like, you know, like Giannis, James Harden, you got all these people. So why do you think it's like, eh, why are you still going? Yeah, I mean, I like, like, there's always new stuff to learn, I guess. Um, although, like, we have picked up a lot of knowledge about the ins and out, outs of, like, e-commerce, of, like, selling clothes, of getting a good target audience to sell it to. I mean, I think it still is essential for me to go to college at least until, I mean, Honestly, like until habits gets too big where I literally can't do homework and stuff, but that's, that's the discussion we'll have at that point. But I mean, I think it's still, um, to get like a business degree or to, um, to just get more knowledge about like entrepreneurship. I I think it's still like important. Yeah. And it's a good, it's a good networking opportunity as well. You know, you're going to meet a lot of new people and, you know, I think that's valuable. I think the experience is valuable. And I, and I definitely think that, um, you know, if you're in, an, in a position where you can go, um, I think you should. Um, I don't think you should break your back for it. You know, the student debt is horrible. We don't even need to get into that. But um, really, it's just about um, meeting new people and just networking. And like I said before, kind of expanding. Yeah, absolutely. And now that you mentioned that you guys are currently um, in, New, in New York, uh, the Mecca. Well, I mean, I know you guys are from New York. So, so the Mecca, like the epicenter of where everything happens, finance, fine arts, and unfortunately, unfortunate events such as 9-11 and now the COVID-19. And so like, what does it feel like to be a New Yorker um, living in this time or understanding that, you know, New York has gone through so much and what type of pride do you have with that? I mean, yeah, like, I mean, being a New Yorker is definitely like a special thing. It's like very different from like anywhere else, it seems like, because when I go somewhere else, other than New York, it's like very, it's just very different because New York's really like in your face. Yeah. And like, it's good that like the brand started in New York just cause like the market here is like 
really, really good. There's a lot of people who like fashion and stuff. Like the fashion here is really good. And um, yeah, I mean, New York has a good market. So I think it's a good place to start up. Yeah, I definitely think New York, uh, like I said, with college before, um, a lot of networking opportunities and just, you know, it's, it's so easy to just meet people and it's very easy to just, um, you know, get a good sense for how life works, you know, going a hundred miles an hour. And that's really what gives us that drive and allows us to do that thing is that kind of that New York mentality where, you know, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're not stopping. Whereas in other places, it's more, it's slower. It's, you know, it's just kind of normal life. Whereas New York, it's like quick, quick, quick. And that really just helps, um, helps us with, in terms of mindset, I'd say for sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So what was the type of environment that you grew up with um, in terms of like your family? And did they ever pursue entrepreneurial pursuits? And um, what was just that background, you know, you guys being in school and explain that, like how you guys just grew up and how that just helped shape the person that you are today? I know I'm asking these really big questions because, you know, they're yeah. just more than, hey. No, of course. Um, I would say that, well, so, you know, so my dad was involved with investment banking for a while, and now he's involved with charter schools. Um, that's really his passion. That's what he likes to do. He's not um, much of an entrepreneur, although, you know, he has done well in his certain fields. Um, I, I'd say entrepreneurship's definitely not up, really up his alley. Um, my mom is a, you know, an author and she used to be a dietitian. So really it's just totally different professions. Um, so really we, I think we just got the entrepreneurship from just seeing them do well at what they do and saying, okay, I want to do well at what I do. And, and really just putting that, translating that into something that was trending at the time, you know, in 2011, 2012, 2013 entrepreneurship, it's like, that's, that's the new thing. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you're, you know, a D1 athlete at, at you know, it's that status um, and that everyone wants to be one and that it's like, you know, it's very, uh, I guess, limited edition, if you want to call it that. So that's really um, what it is at this point. And so I would say that really it just, it translated into that because of place and timing. Um, there was really no formula. There was really no magic wand that said, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur because of this. It just kind of happened that way. And we kind of reverse engineered it by saying, we're going to do this, this and that. And then, oh, we became entrepreneurs as opposed to, I want to be an entrepreneur, let me do this. Um, so that was the, kind of the process I personally went through um, in terms of, I guess, becoming an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Eli? Yeah, I mean, kind of the same for me. Like, it just kind of stemmed from, like, all of my friends liking shoes. And, like, I just started selling shoes. And then I just wanted to get into clothes because it's a more, like, clothes are definitely much more profitable, but also harder. But like, I mean, it's easy to wear a nice pair of shoes, but it's not, I mean, it, it really depends who you are, but like fashion isn't, is one of the most hard, like the hardest fields out there. Harder than sneakers because I mean, there's five big sneaker brands. I can't really name yeah. more than five, but there's a lot of big brands. So you just got to like work your way up. Yeah. 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 That, that is crazy because I mean, um, I would cons I guess I would consider myself a budding entrepreneur. I don't know, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not something that I'm just like, all right. Because, you know, you see everybody's Instagram bio, like, entrepreneur. And it's like, what's that mean? Yeah. And, like, it seems like it's um, everybody wants to be it. But then when it really gets to, like, getting going and actually knowing and understanding, like, okay, cool. I got people that want to join this, and I got to manage the team, manage the staff, and all this stuff. It's a, it's a lot more exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I mean, that's – I guess that's with everything. But in particular, entrepreneurship, I think a lot of people um, talk about wanting to do this. They want to be the boss. They want to, you know, run the numbers up. They want to – get the big athletes and superstars and they want to, you know, uh, get their stuff out there. But at the same time, you know, do you want to put that work in? Do you want to put those extra hours in? Um, and that's a question that, you know, is, is answered by a lot of people as well. No, not really actually. Um, and that, that's the difference. Uh, it's, you know, I don't know if you've watched the last dance recently, but um, yeah. it's similar with, you know, Jordan, it's like, would you really want to be Michael Jordan for a day? Maybe. For a week, mm, I don't know about that. For a month, for a year, it's like, whoa, there. Like, you you know, you see all the glory, but you don't see what happens behind the scenes. And that's the part that a lot of entrepreneurs miss. 
um, people who want to become entrepreneurs, that's what they miss. That they don't understand that it takes more than just, oh, I got this cool wrapper to wear my clothing or, oh, I got these great people to do a, you know, commercial in my comments. It's, you know, a lot deeper than that. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. And that's why it's um, really tough for, for people uh, to get started. And, it, and it's hard and it's, it's not easy, but you really have to want to do it yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, a question for Eli. So, you know, you're just turned 18, bro. Congratulations, you're legal. Hey. Um, did, <laughs> no, but honestly, like, no, celebrate life because, I mean, um, you know, uh, there's not a lot of celebration of life right now. We're in a, in a stage of mourning, so really kudos to that. Yeah. Um, just talking about, like, being so young and being, like, thrown in such, a, in such an industry, like, what type of mental fortitude or what type of things that you had to get used to when it comes to running a business and also um doing like you know doing school and possibly doing sports because you know i know y'all are um big sports fan i'm a big sports fans as well so like, just talk about that balance of like hey i'm 18 i'm just doing this now um and are you thinking are you more of like a short-term thinker or a long-term thinker because you don't have you don't see a lot of 18 year olds um, doing this. We see most of them and myself back in the day, like always focusing, all right, I'm just going to uh, pop this, you know, what Kanye said, get a foreign, wear a Gucci belt, flex it on the gram, and then say that rather than thinking about, hey, how can this thing be sustainable in the long term? Yeah, I mean, I'd say I'm, I'm much more of a long term thinker. Like the reason I started this brand so young is because like, I knew I'd have time to kind of learn like everything about it. And I haven't learned everything about it, but I've learned a very, very good amount. Um, hence, like, why it's gotten, like, why it's got, it's off the ground running now. So, I mean, yeah, like, it's not always easy being, like, kind of one of the youngest in the industry. But, I mean, it's definitely a good thing because I can, like, learn a lot from, like, people older than me. But also, age is really just a number. Like, I feel like once you hit a certain age, like, I don't know, maybe 15 is, is the number, which is when I started you like, it, it's really just a number. Like I, I see people that are like, like TikTok influencers at like 12, like doing these, mo the most ridiculous things ever. And like, it, it's just, it's really just a number. And like, it doesn't, it shouldn't define what you're doing, but like, it's definitely good to be young, like doing this kind of thing. Cause then when I'm 22, like a, a kind of a normal age to start this, start a business maybe then I, I already know like 80 percent of the things i need to know so i guess that's good yeah 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 and then spencer like talk about why you decided to work with your brother because you know when sometimes when it comes to siblings most siblings you know of course their brothers they have fun but you know sometimes they might fight a lot during when they're growing up i'm not sure what that relationship was with your brother like talk about out of all the people that you decided to you could think about working with why did you decide to keep it more of a family thing? And like, right. what's your relationship with one another? No, sure. Yeah, no, I mean, we're, especially now, like we're constantly in each other's faces. So we definitely, um, you know, definitely got plenty, plenty of uh, time together. And so, you know, we, we've always had similar interests. Um, of course, like all people, you know, we have arguments and fights here and there, but that's, that's normal. Um, it's a healthy working relationship. I'd say I've worked with a lot of people in business. The one thing that they have in common and that Eli is separate from is the mindset they don't have that long-term mindset and it really hurts when you're trying to work with someone from the outside but they don't have that same goal and that same outlook i know he has that same outlook so it's easy it's like second nature um because you know we could have a disagreement or we could not think something is correct or we could you know think something that is great um and whatever happens that we both know at the end of the day that you know do we we have the same mindset so anything little errors along the way are going to be okay and they're going to be fixed by themselves because there's no concern about hey maybe after a year and a half this guy's going to dip um that's not a concern and that's not an issue um with one another so i would say that makes it pretty easy to work with um somebody that's in-house as opposed to somebody from the outside who after a year they might just get disinterested their priorities might be in a different place whereas you know with him i know what his priorities are and i am able to work with it because i know where mine are and i know that's where we're similar. And, and so it, you know, it cancels all the other stuff out and it makes it, you know, pretty easy, um, you know, in the overall scope of things uh, to work with someone in-house as opposed to um, outside. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. And, you know, 
um, as an entrepreneurship minor and just studying and understanding that, looking at how my, my dad and my mom, you know, my dad and my auntie, they have their own businesses, um, but the majority of it is in-house. And you would like to see like the most successful um, businesses happen to be people that have built families, family businesses, you know, like all through longevity. You talk about all the last name, like the Warner Brothers or, or just like, you know, or Sony or, I, I don't, you know, all these big names that we know today They've always started with a family foundation rather than, and of course, you know, they do reach out to people outside because, you know, your family won't know everything and anything. But I think it's really important for people, especially our age, because we're talking about, like, I mean, I bet you might have some instances where, oh, man, you think, I know sometimes I get caught up in, oh, man, my friend, one of my best friends from college, oh, that's my brother. But then, you know, a year later, they might go on, they might backstab me or something like that. But then when you actually have the family, have that family relationship, you guys are going to continue to just grow and build on top of that because, you know, your blood. That doesn't necessarily mean blood makes you family, but more likely, you know, you're more likely to be successful within that relationship if the common interest is together. What y'all think about that? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. I'd also say um, I think something that could be touched on is, um, you know, your family is pretty small. So you're gonna like, you know, like you said, you're gonna have to find people from the outside. It's really more about building a family, I'd say building a culture that um, allows people from the outside to come in. And that's kind of how we've built our, our program, um, you know, with seeing, okay, who has our mindset, who understands what we're trying to do, let's bring them in and let's work with them um, side by side, even though yes, they're not like technically business partners, let's as such, let's give them benefits, let's show them what we've got, let's, how can they contribute and really building that culture, um, you know, for the greater good of the brand is, is something I'd say is very valuable and something that we've done and that's worked very well. Um, and we're always consistently trying to find people who fit our vision and who um, want to bring their own spin to the brand because that's always special to, you know, to be super innovative and always, you know, tr uh, on, the, uh, on the trending page. Um, that's, you know, that, that definitely is something that we focus on and that we like to do. What about you, Eli? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, like, what, what, when you have kind of like the same interests, it's going to be really easy to kind of connect and kind of like build a really good brand. And in some ways, if like you're both hardworking. So, yeah, I mean, it just comes from like your mindset and just having like a good mindset about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really good. So, now, why did you guys decide to call your brand Habits? Habits 365, what, what, what was like the start of it, the foundation? And, you know, you, you knew that, yeah, this is the name. Like, this is the name that's going to really mm -hmm. pop off compared to any other ideas that you had. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much um, I was thinking, like, what, what can every, every single person in the world relate to? And I was like, hmm, ha everybody has habits, don't they? Like, whether they're good or bad. Like, at, what it's like like literally everybody has a habit it's just human nature like you Universal. have so like i wanted to create this brand that like can inspire others through the like reinforcement of positivity and good habits year around pretty much and that's kind of and it's a really powerful name like habits it's, it's like a thing but it's also people are going to look at it one day and it's it's oh the habits brand of course like kind of that and 365 just puts a little like ring on it so yeah what about you Spencer I mean yeah well honestly like Eli really kind of spearheaded the name and came up with the concept around it um I really just was there to you know kind of a granite but I definitely think it's important to be able to relate to everyone and be able to just understand what people are gonna want to you know be involved with people aren't gonna go for the best designs they're not gonna go for you know, what's looking the coolest, they're going to go for what they feel the best about. And if you can make people feel good and give them a feeling of, hey, we're going to encourage Positive Habits 365 and you're going to wear the clothes and you're just going to feel better. You're going to, you know, do your habits. You're going to be reminded constantly of, hey, my habits are going to make me. And so that's why I think the, the brand name is definitely good. And that's why I definitely was uh, on board with it from the jump. Yeah. And you know what? I really like how you guys were talking about the culture and how everybody can relate to this. And so, you know, the really big thing nowadays in whatever industry is about like diversity and inclusion, 
And, um, you know, that's a very big topic. Sometimes I, I can get a little bit frustrated or a little bit annoyed with the word diversity inclusion because, you know, it's just like, hey, okay, you're just going to plot people there. Yay, people like in college institutions or schools be like, yay, we're diverse when you're not really getting the, the equitable opportunity for everybody to truly think about that. So whenever you guys are just thinking about your brand and also now thinking to yourself as an individual, what does it mean to be a diverse and inclusive person? And then after that, correlate that into your business and how you can be able to reach a broader audience that people are gonna you know, really um, relate to habits. Yeah, I mean, pretty much like kind of when, when you're wearing, when you're wearing habits, like the first thought should be, all right, I'm wearing habits. Like now I'm going to focus on my habits. They, they don't have to be the best habits, but like they should understand that habits are so important and just wearing it is just a daily reminder. Like it's just so like powerful. And like our slogan is wear your habits, which is like really nice because like you're wearing your habits. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. Right. I would definitely say it's, it's all, it's all very sub subconscious, by the way, like nobody's going to literally put the shirt on and be like, wow, I'm wearing my habits today. It's going to just be, you're just going to feel it. Um, it's kind of unexplainable, I'd say. Um, and it, it's really going to just, you know, have a, have a positive effect physically, mentally, metaphysically on people who are, you know, getting involved with the brand and who are wearing the stuff and who are seeing it. Um, we want to make them feel good. We want to make them feel like we're here for you. We're here to encourage you and, you know, cheer you on on the sidelines um, and really just, you know, pump you up and get you going to become the best version of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now with that, though, I just wanted to, you guys just to dig deeper. Like New York is super, super diverse, super cultured. And um, I just want to get your a mindset of like what diversity means to y'all. Like, like just as an individual and how this has helped you build your habits in your daily life and just transfer into like, you know what, because of this, um, you know, I'm just going to do this well. And you know what, I want to make sure that I'm more of a global thinker or a global learner and things like that. Right. Diversity is really, you know, of course it's, you know, your ethnicity, your skin color, your gender, your, you know, your shape and your size. However, it's really diversity in thought and diversity in culture and diversity in background. Um, where did you come from? What is your mindset? What do you, um, you know, what, what do you want out of this experience and out of your life in general? And really, it's just focusing on that. Um, and, you know, just just understanding that, you know, whatever it is you want, we want to be there and we want to help and we want to encourage you to just keep moving and keep pushing. And so diversity really comes from just you know understanding different people different ideas um as opposed to just you know where you are from and you know what your skin color is it's really more than that um while those things are important of course um it's just moving forward with the understanding of different people from different aspects of life can help this business and um you know you're only good as good as your weakest link and we want everyone to double and triple down on their strengths not everyone to be this all around you know uh, unicorn. We want, you know, if you're great at emailing, you're only doing emailing. I don't want you touching designs. If you're great at sales, I don't want you doing promotion. If you're wonderful at designing, there's no need for you to be, you know, making video content. And so really it's focusing on not trying to mold everyone, but letting rather letting them mold themselves in this business and really take ownership of it um, from that standpoint. So I'd say diversity is super, super important. Yeah, that's really good. And I, I really love how you said not just because most people in the culture, they just think, OK, skin color. Yay. But it is just a diversity of thought and understanding that so many people can have different ideas. So, Eli, like what, for um, this question is more towards you. So, you know, you being young and understanding, like, how what were some of the barriers whenever you're trying to tell somebody that was a little bit older than you? Like, hey, I, I like your idea. But what about just think about it like this way? Or, yo, um, I like my idea. My idea is great. But then somebody challenges you. It's like, you know what? Maybe that's not so hot. This idea might be better for it. Just talk about that experience and just growing up and like understanding that, you know, we as leaders and entrepreneurs, we need to have two ears rather than just one mouth and use that more. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Like no, when I'm like dealing with a lot of people, like I'll, I'll tell them, oh, maybe you could do this because I've seen that this works for me. So you should try this out. And it's kind of more, it's constructive criticism, but not like 
it, it's like very easy to like judge, but like to help is a whole different thing yeah. because you can judge, but then offer some like great advice, which is completely different from like just saying your idea is terrible. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's kind of like a mix of those. Yeah. And then Spencer, now this, um, y'all both, no, this is actually a question for both of y'all. So y'all are um, CEO, COO, and um, just understanding that leadership, that leadership aspect. And you know what, you need great leaders to be able to run a great business. Talk about what that role of leadership, what does leadership mean for y'all, both as an individual and also as a team, um, as a, like a, as a team to be able to lead habits to where you want it to go. Right. Yeah. I mean, leadership is super important, you know, as the, uh, you know, I am the CEO, I'm also the chairman. So I, I really in charge of kind of um, the setup of the structure of, you know, the representatives and the ambassadors um, and just kind of understanding, you know, who's being put in what position. My job is to put everyone in the position where they're best at and where they're going to enjoy the most. So really it's on me to figure out, all right, what do you like to do? Let's try you out here. Let's try you out there. What works best and what's the best for the company. And we're going to find that optimal point for everyone. And of course it's not easy and it takes a lot of time and it took a lot of time, but now we're at a point where we've found that, you know, happy medium for most people where they're in a place where they really like, and they're in a place where they can really thrive. So it's really just about leading by example and finding the best positions for everyone and delegating, you know, putting people in charge of different aspects of the business. I can't do everything in the business. Eli and I can't do every single thing. So that's why there's somebody in charge of ambassador development. There's somebody in charge of orientation. There's somebody in charge of email marketing. There's somebody in charge of operations of the brand. There's people in charge of every aspect of it. Um, And, you know, them and myself and Eli work together to really, you know, reach that optimal point and, um, giving others responsibility just makes my job a easier and just really helps, um, you know, the brand as a whole. Cause at the end of the day, um, I'm not good at a lot of the things that they're very good at. And so I recognize that and it helps me. It makes it easier to put them in that position because I know that it's not a one man show that it takes a team. And so that's what leadership is really just leading by example and putting everyone in the best position to succeed. Yeah. What about you, Eli? Yeah. I mean, like, it's pretty important to just kind of like, like understand your role. And like, you we, we have like a lot of diversity on our team. Like there's a lot of people that do a lot of different things, but some people that can't do one thing will do another thing. And just kind of understanding your role is like the most crucial point to like, um, to building a brand, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, of course, um, y'all are on the rise and um, I'm super excited to be part of a team as an ambassador, but I'm also learning uh, so much from you guys from afar in terms of what it means to just develop in terms of my own, my own practices with my own streetwear and also with this podcast and everything like that. So I just want to say, thank, I want to thank y'all for um, you guys being great examples of that. But now, uh, of course, you know, we're, we're college students. You know, we're, 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 we're still kids, quote unquote. Um, but I mean, I really feel like it's important for us to get, keep that youth and that energy and that enthusiasm. So what do y'all do for fun? Like, how do you guys lay off the ease? How do you guys relax when you know that you got all this going on? But you know what? I'm just going to take a time out to just hang out with my boys. Like, what are some of the stuff that you do for fun? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hang out with friends. I mean, I still, I, I, I still like have a very normal life. Just I have to spend a little more time on the business. And a lot of the business can be done outside of the home. Yeah. Like social media, like just like everything's online. So like, it's not, it's not, it's not like hard to like maintain your normal life. It's just kind of a job if you think about it like that. Yeah. What about you, Spencer? I would say, yeah, I mean, I, I have a pretty normal life as well. Um, you know, I'm in a fraternity and I, you know, have a normal college life. You know, it's nothing really crazy. I, you know, I play basketball, I play, um, just for fun kind of. And, um, I have some other hobbies that I do some other outside businesses that I work with, but I really like doing it. So it's really fun for me to just get involved with all that stuff. Uh, and I, you know, I work out, I, I try to go outside when it's not, you know, Corona season, but, um, yeah, I, I'd say I really enjoy what I do. So it, it's essentially, it is fun for me. Um, you know, in addition to just being with friends and family and, and having a good time, um, it's really, it's really fun for, for me to, to do what I do. So, um, 
I, I see it all as one. Um, you know, of course, I'll take days off and I'll have time, you know, by myself. But really, I'm able to balance it out um, pretty, pretty easily, I'd say. Yeah. And I really feel like sometimes that's one thing that um, the culture um, as a state has definitely been more lenient to is understanding that we need to take that self-care, especially during this time where things have slowed down. And, you know, like we're so like, you know, in the move, New York is on the move. That's one place that I'm thinking about living, um, living after I, I graduate, whether grad school, anything like that. But you have so many things going on. And it's good that you guys understand that you guys are human. You guys are normal. And you guys do take breaks. And, you know, your kid, like you're, you're very young. And, you know, we still have these other ideas and aspirations more than just focus on this one thing that's going to take over our lives. And um, I hopefully people will be able to get the understanding that, yeah, you can still run a successful business and do the stuff that you want, but also um, just be chill. Yeah. Just be chill. So okay, how did you guys get the rappers, the rappers, the, the basketball players, like all these people to wear yourself? Like, what, what's the story behind that? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty like kind of, kind of a secret process, but a, a lot of it, like at first it was just DMing like all of them pretty much um and i mean the bigger ones the those have have their ways um yeah. we 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 have met some people along the way that know a decent amount of these bigger guys like the the hardens of the world the floyds of the world and i mean it's just kind of like the more the more rappers and athletes we got the more of them wanted to wear it and just felt like inclined to oh yeah yeah right. definitely the the sec the secret recipe um you know is of course a secret recipe however um the overall recipe is networking yeah if you network you can do this just as easily as we can but you got to really network that doesn't mean dming five people and hoping and praying you can get someone to answer this yeah. means dming people finding connections to other people that you know you know striving for the top people not just trying to go for you know the low hanging fruit, going for the top and networking, 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 sending 50, 100, 150 DMs a day, as many as IG will let you and really just uh, grinding in that. And that that's the secret recipe um, is just networking, networking, networking. Yeah, that is that, that is true. That is true. Like uh, one guy, one guy that, I, um, that I'm pretty close to, um, his name is Kyle Dendy. He was telling me, man, he, he stands about the every day the limit of how many dms and like you know it's so funny because you see the transition from sales used to be phone calls or door to door to phone calls to now like you're selling via dms it's so crazy to see how instagram has really truly like um like blew up in terms of like a business as a way that you can sell people to i mean shoot if it wasn't for this dm i'm like man i hope they answer and y'all did and i'm just like shoot like <laughs> wow and i mean I'm just grateful. So uh, talk about Forbes. How did that happen? You guys were featured on Forbes and not a, not a lot of young people are featured on Forbes unless it's like Forbes, like, you know, Summit, but like Forbes itself as a, like you guys being on there, talk about that. I mean, of course, you know, it's just things, but like, how did that help your brand? And then what did that feel like? you like, you know, I was not even expecting to be on Forbes, but you know, it had just happened. Yeah, I mean, like, in the beginning, we were kind of just reaching out to a lot of different publications. Forbes was not one of them. So, like, it's kind of, it kind of, like, magically happened pretty much. Um, like, a, For uh, a Forbes writer reached out to us, asked, can they write about us? And we were like, of course, gave them our story. Then four or five months later, another Forbes article came along, um, kind of stringing, like, kind of a different topic of just like entrepreneurship in school so kind of just focused on on two different things so I mean yeah it was kind of it, it, was, it was crazy that it happened the way it did so that is that is crazy that is crazy yeah. what, like man like congratulations on that um because that's a big deal I mean yeah no thank you man awesome awesome so now uh, for this last segment of the show I asked some pretty big questions um, to my guests. And so now my first big question for y'all or small, like we're going to like get bigger and bigger um, is, you know, at the beginning, what were your top three failures um, during your time? Oh, 
my line went, okay, we got about to go left. What, what were your top three um, biggest failures that, you know, you learned from? It's like, you know what, even though it sucked in the moment, I'm glad that that happened because now we're where we are now. I'd say uh, one of the biggest failures was manufacturing. Um, you know, we weren't really sure where to go and we were kind of bouncing back and forth and we really just couldn't find a uniform really yet. And it's still something we struggle with. I mean, we, yeah, we have a great connection and we have a great um, relationship with a handful, but you know, we're still in that frame of, okay, who are we going to find? What are we going to do? So I'd say that was our biggest failure. Our second biggest failure was really just honestly um, mindset. It, it was, we, we weren't sure how big this could get and we were kind of you know tiptoeing and not really going after who we knew we could be going after um and we just took a really long time to start advertising and that that was our our second biggest failure i'd say um in no particular order and and the third failure i would say um was you know the the hiring process you know we had been you know giving people easy access too quickly and trusting people too soon. And really it was just about, you know, understanding that not everyone's here to benefit the company and that we need to be very careful on who we get in touch with and who we go about uh, doing business with. That was definitely the third biggest failure was not really vetting people um, and giving them easy access when they didn't really deserve it. Um, and those definitely hurt, but it, it was very important that those happen because we learned a lot from it and it helped us uh, moving forward. A, a ton what about you what what, what Eli uh, what are your three your idea like your three biggest failures that you've experienced so far yeah I mean it's uh, that's obviously a tough question because like you you focus on the failures at one point but then you have many successes and then it just goes in the garbage can the failures um but like yeah like not knowing how many of like a product to order but now we know because like if we get like 30 orders in a day of the same product we know we need to order 300 of them mm -hmm. so it's just kind of like i like i didn't really know um we were just kind of guessing and checking which wasn't great for the beginning but now we kind of know that i'd say that's like the main failure i'd say okay okay that's really good i really like that and, and spencer i really liked how easy access um that's something that i um uh, kind of struggle with is I, you know, I feel like I've been on this per like been on this earth to give. I mean, that's what we're all created to do and um, called to do, right? But with that, sometimes we are so e susceptible for allowing people to be in our circle or been in our be in our space that don't deserve to be. So like, after that like happened, like what were like were just like one one thing that you did to make sure that you were not as easily accessible to people um, because of that. I really like that point. I really want like to dig into that a little bit. Really just, it's just about delegating. Um, like I said before, putting different people in different roles and kind of having them manage certain parts. So if someone wants to get involved in this, this is who they go to. They don't come to me and they kind of have to get through certain people to then get to those people to then get to me. So it's not really just, you know, Oh, I have this great idea. Great get in line with a million other people. So really it's just, um, it's just vetting and it's just kind of having a, a ladder, uh, which really makes it easier and more efficient. Okay. So I know we're running a little bit out of, um, out of time. Second big question. What is, what is, uh, what is something that you would like to see change in the United States? From, from what perspective? <laughs> Any, no, this is just like, just your, your perspective, anyone, anything that you feel like is important or, um, or something that doesn't get noticed, what do you feel like, you know, that you would like to see change? Um, I'll, I'll keep this apolitical and PG. Um, oh, no, no, I, would, I, would like, uh, <laughs> I would like to see people start thinking for themselves and, you know, not just follow the, you know, not, I, I want people to be not so um, easy to believe things and easy to believe that they are, you know, less than they are. And I want people to start valuing themselves more, knowing their worth better, uh, without being delusional. I think, I think people should just look at themselves with a better light and not think of themselves as so awful and so terrible. I think, um, I, I really just think people should, should have a better mindset in themselves and believe more in themselves um, and actually put the work in to match that belief um, is really what I would like to see change. 
not just in the U.S., but around the world. Um, if you're pertaining to the U.S., I would just, I would like to see the same thing, honestly. Um, I would like to see people not be such followers and start being leaders. Yeah. What about you, Eli? Yeah, I mean, kind, kind of the same thing. Like, I want people to kind of have their own way of doing stuff, not, not like copy the way of others. I think that's like really important for just like diversity and like kind of doing your own thing, making your own path. Right. That's it. That's good. Like I read, a, I remember I actually tweeted a quote about this yesterday. Um, the moment, because I was listening to a podcast by this guy named Naval, he said, "The moment you start to imitate somebody else, you lost." Completely, completely lost. And then now, my last question for y'all is, um, what do y'all want your legacy to be? Um, I'd say for, uh, I'd say being like a successful clothing company owner and like just a serial entrepreneur start my goal is to start a bunch of businesses when I'm older um kind of along the line of habits so I, I just want to like um show people that like this can be done it's not easy but it can be done so yeah I, I really want to um bring light to things that people gloss over and you know in 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 life and in in business I want just people to understand that they can do what they want and they don't have to just follow the path that's already paved um really and and obviously we want this to be um one of the most successful brands in the world as well as i want to um you know have my businesses uh created and and allow me to put myself I'll allow myself to be in a position to help others um understand what they can do and what they need to do uh to to achieve what they want that's incredible. Um, final piece of the this podcast episode is where I just speak life. I'm, I'm a big believer in speaking life to people because once you speak life to yourself, uh, you really transfer to other people. Um, Y'all are doing the dang thing. Um, I'm super, it, you guys inspire me. And I'm so glad that um, you guys made the time. You guys continuing to push the culture forward, understanding that age does not matter. And whatever we're going to get, whatever we want, we're going to do our best to get that. So I just want to encourage y'all to keep on going, keep on doing, and I believe in the vision. And um, Lord willing, I can't wait to see y'all at the top soon. Yep. Yeah, no, was, was awesome. this was nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's it, everybody, for um, – actually, one quick thing. Where can the people follow you? Where can the people follow y'all and um, the brand? Yeah, on Instagram, we're uh, habits underscore 365. Um, my personal is Eli.side. My personal is S Z I D 713. Um, I have a business page, which is Step Up with Spencer. So they can follow me on either of those two uh, accounts. All righty. And that's it, y'all. We are done. <laughs>